I think a chef is at his best when they combine the foods that they grew up with with their techniques that they have learned. But you have to have that, who are you, you know? And that's who you are. It's like where you were born, the type of food that you were raised on, and, and you know, that has to have some kind of influence in the palate, which end up being the most important tool as a chef. I love going out to restaurants with her just to eat other chefs' food because she's telling me every ingredient as she tastes each bite. When you're really developing the palate and the flavors and what is that bite that you want to give out, um, that comes from where you were born. So that has to be present. And not many people do that, I think. She is really that artisan chef, which is leading her to great, great strides in the whole industry because it's not like I'm just a chef on TV, I play one. There's the artisan chefs and there's more the celebrity chefs. Lorena's now both. So I'm Chef Lorena Garcia and you are here at Chica at the Venetian in Las Vegas. Well, we wanted to have kind of the inspiration of an old casona. You know, the casonas that you see in Venezuela, in the northern part, in the mountains, in Colombia, even in Argentina. You have these balconies that have all these iron applications. So throughout Chica, that's what you see. We have different areas, but all those iron applications are almost like the replica of these beautiful balconies. It is a feminine restaurant, so you see it in the colors, in the prints, in the lettering. And the way that I say that it's a feminine restaurant, because you know, usually in the kitchen you have a lot of toughness, a lot of rudeness, you know, it's very aggressive. And we just switch that to passion and love and commitment and, and you know, just transforming that energy so it reflects on the food and that's what I think uh, has been one of the major successes of our menu is that, you know, the food is bright, it's passionate and it's, it's just delicious. Restaurant Row is this street within the Venetian that have the most combined award winner chef in one spot. One of the restaurants that I absolutely love it. If I'm not eating a chica, I'll be right next door at Yardbird. This is a, Yardbird is a concept from my partner, John Conco. Extremely successful. One of the best fried chickens that you will find in the country. So Yardbird's on its fourth year. It's one of the busiest restaurants on the property. It does amazingly well. Chica, when we opened, we were trying to, again, do something that didn't particularly exist on that scale in the market, and, and Lorena obviously being the first uh, a female Latina chef on the strip, and, and so we were nervous, obviously, to see how it went. Whatever I have in my mind in terms of, you know, the respect that I have for the ingredients and the dishes that I'm coming with, I have to take in consideration the broader aspect of the audience that we have to feed, and how much time. We have three seconds from the moment that a person reads the menu to walking in or walking out. So, you know, all those things that sometimes you know, I get like discouraged, oh my God, you know, I have to call my cachapas pancakes. They're not pancakes, they're cachapas. But yeah, if I call them pancakes, maybe you will know what they are and then it's a perfect introduction to, to what you're going to taste. So just trying to bring that cuisine to more of a broader audience. That's a challenge. You know, I received a phone call from my publicist and she said, Lorena, you got invited to the James Beer house to do a dinner. For chef, the James Beer Foundation gives awards, that is the James Beer Awards, which are like the Oscars for chef. I was super honored, super surprised. You know, I called John and said, John, you know, I got invited to, a, to the James Beer house. Let's go, let's do this. What, what it takes to be successful in this industry is, is one thing in my mind, a relentless pursuit of excellence, because you're only as good as you're last night's service. And this is the first impression that Chica is going to give, and myself, Lorena Garcia, in New York. The restaurant business, you never coast, you never get to the place that it's easy. It's, it's never just, okay, we made it, right? Every night you start over again. You have 80 people or 100 people that are gonna come to the dinner talking about Chica and about Lorena Garcia that is going to multiply, continue to multiply, right? In terms of culinarily, it's an amazing accomplishment because I can tell you that that word of mouth is just unbelievable. Preparing for something like this is insane because for us, you know, we've only been together here for a year. This is an opportunity of a lifetime, so I'm really excited for us at Chica as a whole family that we get to be part of this. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's super exciting to be part of the James Beard house. <laughs> I've worked at very fine places, but yeah. this is this is like 
top of the really ladder. So there is a lot of stake because you know one mistake can be detrimental to uh, you know to the whole experience. I don't know if I knew what it was being a chef at, at you know my early years, but what I was completely sure is that I knew I did not want to be a lawyer. <laughs> so my process of elimination after going to law school, you know, got presented with my first job and literally quit in the same day. I said, you know, this is not for me. And then I knew, you know, if I like to cook, let me just dive into it because I think if I do what I love, you know, success will follow. So I got a loan, I went to the bank. So I was cooking, prepping, and picking up the dishes. And I have a friend of mine in the front of the house taking the orders. I had six tables. And of course, I didn't have money to pay any salary, so I asked my best friend if he could take the orders, and he did. And he would work for the tips. And then he called his best friend, so it was like uh, two gorgeous guys and me cooking in the back. Thank you so much. Yes, right here. You know, I was doing what I needed to do at the time, to get in Polish and really getting out there and, and, and get experience, which is so important. Experience at every level. Experience in um, being able to communicate effectively, uh, being able to manage um, the food industry from the restaurant point of view. Every single effort and everything that I did in terms of building my brand kind of backed me up in order to me talk to John and say, listen, this is what I have. And again, you have to have something to give and offer. You have to have pace, you have to have uh, substance. He's gonna be with me on the Churrasco station. We're gonna be making the octopus, um, arepitas here for one of the appetizers, main course is the tamal, and hopefully I can make it to you at the end. You're gonna see the plantain leaves and a lot of things that are happening. You know, this is the first time that I've been invited uh, to the James Beer house. It takes a lot. We have to do a lot of prep here in the restaurant because they give you absolutely nothing. The only thing that you have is the kitchen and a group of uh, servers that will actually will serve the food, but all the ingredients, all the cooks, all the you know plates, silverware, besides the basics that they have over there, we have to bring everything from Vegas. So it's a big operation. The way that I would love to see it, if we can do prep and be ready on Thursday, then Friday is really getting ourselves situated, figure it out, the flow and whatever else, you know. For me, it's just like, wow. I didn't, I didn't believe I was going to uh, cook there, you know, in my life. So being part of this team, this is, this is great. I think it's unbelievable. I can speak for 3,000 people, no problem. I can do a lot of television, but... When it comes to cooking for someone, even if it's just one person, it's just, I get, start freaking out. I mean, I slept two hours last night, and I'm just, you know, maybe overthinking it so much, you know, dish by dish, how it's gonna go, the process. It's just a lot. <laughs> it gets me every time, and even when I cook for my mother, you know, I get always a little nervous. So imagine this, you know, multiplied a hundred times. Maybe not the most important meal of my life, but but it's up there. It's, it's on that range, you know, it's in that zone. Can okay, you give me a, another bag just in case? Just don't let... Uh, so we're going to um, 167 West 12th Street. <laughs> now. Where is it here? Yeah. This is it. Wow, this is the size of the kitchen, huh? Yeah. Okay, let me unload. Chef, where do you unload your things? Do you have it somewhere in yes, particular? So your, your backpack and jacket, if you go through this door, go to the left, and on the left you see a cold closet. Yeah, I just put my first one there. Okay. For chefs, this is considered kind of a bucket list item. They dream of cooking here. It means they've achieved a certain level of sort of success and recognition in their careers. So we have a final count of 82, which is four floors in the house. So we have the fourth floor, then we go down 
to the terrace, then we go up to the second floor, and then I think that we do the library. So it's going to be people everywhere. You know, usually they say that when you have a customer that is happy, he will tell 10 more people, right? So 80 becomes 800. 80 people talking bad about us? That's bad. Yeah. <laughs> So the style is fresh, modern Latin, span Latin. So influences from Mexico, Venezuela, and then we touch on Peru, Brazil, and Argentina, of course. So you're gonna see the pickles, the sauces, uh, and different chiles that we use that actually react in our palate in different ways. And the first thing that we're gonna hit them with is a tostada. It's a beautiful corn tostada that is going to be served with a delicious crab salad, a stone crab, and then we top it up with a little bit of caviar. I think that, you know, alone, you do nothing. You achieve nothing. You're, I'm a team player, and, and I think that, you know, I'm a leader as well. I, you know, I think that I have that uh, kind of a drive. Uh, but at the same time, I think that you need to surround those. I, I think that that is key, actually. You need to surround yourself with the people that actually balance you and make you a contrast, almost like cooking. She loves what she does, and I think it permeates to everybody on the staff. And I think not everyone's a born leader. She's a born leader. So I, I just found out everybody's in the business in some form or another, kind of, yeah. sort of, yeah? Oh, that's and from the UK. <laughs> that's great. So we're super excited to have you. We always love feeding restaurant folks in some capacity. I was born in Venezuela, so they... The, the backbone of the menu, you're gonna see the food that I grew up with. And I think every chef has to have that, has to have that food that created a memory, something that makes you feel something. And that is exactly what I wanted to bring to the menu uh, with the flavors of Venezuela. So I just want you to know that this is a very important day for me. I usually don't get very nervous, but today I am freaking out. <laughs> Well, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to serve the ceviche. It's a sushi grade market fish uh, with Santa Barbara sea urchin. Look, what I did is I took the leche de tigre and I fused it with a little bit of uh, mint, so yerbabuena from Latin America. We have uh, pomegranate. I have actually mandarin, so tangerines, uh, microgreens right on top, so it's uh, like another herbaceous tone to it. Uh, sea urchin, a little bit of cucumbers, and cancha, which is a Peruvian corn that has been toasted and roasted and it gives a little bit of a texture right on top. I think it was quite an accomplishment to me and I think to her and I think to Harriet, all of us that work with her, to see her on Chef's Row in Vegas. You're constantly working and working and working and working and working and you know that you're going somewhere, you know that you have a focus, you know that you want to do this, but you don't really know how this is going to happen. Uh, it's just a progression of things, but you just, it's almost like it cuts you by surprise. What, one of the the great stories that I have about this incredible wall is that when I was uh, shooting Top Chef Masters uh, and I came actually to the Venetian to do one of our last uh, challenges and when I saw the culinary wall I, I, I said well I'm gonna put this on my vision board one day I'll be standing on that on that wall. I think Lorena like I did kind of came up the hard way and, and paying her dues and working in tough kitchens and and you know, not always having the recognition that maybe she deserved. Um, and I think, you know, when you fight for something, uh, it makes it that much sweeter when you get it. And and for Lorena, you know, she's she's tough as you have to be growing up in kitchens and running a kitchen. You have to be ready. You have to be prepared. You have to work a lot. You have to focus. You have to execute. You have to study. You have to learn. Again, you know, it takes a lot, but you know, it comes. If you're focused, it comes. Sure. Why don't we turn around and you follow me? You wanna help me out there? <laughs> okay, so after we serve the ceviche, we're gonna go with our second course, which is our sweet plantain soup. You're gonna have a sear foie gras, a spice, creme fresh, pickle fresh no chiles, and green plantain crumble. So that is going to go into the table. 
Then we're gonna give you pictures and we're gonna serve between five to six ounces of the soup table side. Uh, so, you know, I just want the people to come and see this beautiful plate. The uh, foie gras is beautifully seared on the top, so you, it's gonna be nice and crunchy, and then you're gonna hit it with the creaminess of the foie gras. Then you have all these beautiful components on the dish. And that's what we wanted to serve at table size. As, as long as our guests see the plate, the beginning, and then we hit it with the soup, we do the same table by table, okay? Yeah, my priority was that that food will went out on time and that it was hot. I mean, that was key for me. And, um, you know, once we got into that zone and we have, we had a plan and for me it was very important to follow that plan. These peppers and the octopus that is being previously uh, simmered and steamed for, for a long period of time just to be perfectly cooked. We're going to toss it with the mojo rojo and then we're gonna char it on the grill. So we're gonna put it right on top. We're gonna put a spicy pico de gallo on top and crispy quinoa. So tons of flavors and texture right in one plate. So that is our fish course. Niño, do I have here like a little hotel pan de los larguitos chiquiticos, chiquiticos? Thank you. DJ, DJ, grab this. He can put the tamal. You want me to hit the flower? You hit it on the okay. side because it's three flowers, okay? Yeah. We can do three color and maybe one little green, either or. Patrick, how many days have been uh, the uh, chef? How many days? 63 days we've been aging our, our New York strip. It's absolutely delicious. We're going to serve that one with a ayaca venezolana. It's actually a tamal that we wrap in plantain leaf and it is the masa. It's actually mixed with a sofrito with different, again, sweet chiles, uh, kind of a semi-sweet, uh, also a red wine. It's called Sanson. And then we mix all of this with a, a pork shoulder and then we make like a sofrito, like a very intense, intense, uh, flavorful sofrito. Then we mix the masa with the pork sofrito and we put the tamal inside of, or this mixture inside of the plantain leaf. Don't forget about the tamales to open them. Tell them to please open the tamal. <laughs> when my mother used to do at the end, when she had like the guiso, you know, the, the stuffing and the masa, she would put it together. And that was kind of our, was our, our treat every week, and so I decided to do that and place it on a tamalito so it will go perfectly with the steak. So that's kind of the idea behind the plantain tamal. <laughs> Very staple of Venezuela and the northern part of South America. When I'm cooking, it's all about the love. It's, it's nourishing, you know, those relationships and, and your body and, you know, the moment that you actually can have with your friends, your family, your coworkers, and, and just having that connection. So you see everything that food kind of triggers. And that's what I put my focus on. two desserts tonight. Uh, the first one is going to be the Marquesa de Chocolate. Again, another uh, typical uh, dessert of my country. It's almost like a, a tiramisu, if you will. It is made with uh, graham crackers or cookies that have been soaked in a little bit of espresso. And then we uh, layer it with uh, our chocolate mousse, 100% Venezuelan chocolate. And it has a beautiful chocolate mirror right on top. We do a little bit of cocoa powder, we're gonna, I'm sorry, cocoa beans, and we're gonna serve it with a creme anglaise and a raspberry sauce. To be able to execute it perfectly for 80 people with only five people in the kitchen, yes, it is, you know, it's stripping it down to the bones. That kind of reminds me of, you know, my early years, which is exactly what I used to do 
in my small restaurant in which I, you know, I literally had to do everything. So now I'm kind of going for a circle, you know, and going this super high-end dinner. We have our famous buñuelos. That's going to be our second dessert. Uh, the way that we're going to serve this is nice and crispy buñuelos. They have the lemon tones and we serve it with a white chocolate condensed sauce and also a blackberry, almost like a compote. All those flavors, the sweetness and the tanginess of the sauces, then with the beautiful fried dough. We always say, and I learned this from John, any little piece of fried dough is a good one. So I figured we had to finish on that one. A little bit of powdered sugar and deshydrated lemons. <laughs> you got them a fried dough. I remember these things. You like blew their asses out of the water on Top Chef Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it's sacred. Our wonderful team! So my guys, this is my amazing team. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Just for the moment. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Let me do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got it together. So I want to appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for being part of such an special night. Not only for me, for for my entire team, and the entire group at Chica. We're honored and privileged to be here at the James Beer House and offering you a little bit of a taste of Latin America. And it's like you walked in into a little piece of our hearts and I hope that you were able to feel and taste the love and the nourishment that we wanted to give not only on the table and your tummies, but the relationship that you were able to establish right on your table. That's what we do it. Thank you so much. I feel actually uh, a little bit numb. <laughs> there was a lot of pressure and um, and super happy. I think that we did like an amazing job last night. Everybody was super excited. My team was incredible last night. Everybody was talking about the food and how amazing it was. So mission accomplished.